In this video, we're going to talk about the Hooker theory, more specifically, the basis of the Hooker theory. Hooker theory is usually used for unsaturated hydrocarbons to find out about their ordering of the energy levels and the degeneracies of the energy levels. Now to discuss the basis, we need the variational method, which says we minimize the energy with respect to parameters, which I call CI, where the energy is just the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. We'll need the linear combination of atomic orbital approximation, which says our total wave function is just the sum of weighted atomic orbitals, and our energy is expressed by this, which is just the general form of an expectation value. If now we say that our total wave function just consists of two atomic orbitals for simplicity, we can write C1 phi 1 plus C2 phi 2, where C1 and C2 are the parameters which we'll use to minimize the energy. If we put this into our expectation value expression now, we get C1 squared phi 1 h phi 1 plus C1 C2 phi 1 h phi 2. And now I'll write a 2 here because we also have the opposite term where it's phi 2 h phi 1, but they're identical, so I can just write a 2 here plus C2 squared phi 2 h phi 2. And all of this has to be divided by c1 squared plus c2 squared plus 2c1 c2 phi 1 phi 2. Here for these terms I assumed that phi 1 and phi 2 are normalized. Now let me simplify this, this expression by introducing some notation. We're going to call these terms um, so phi i h phi j, we're going to call h i j, which describes the energy of the overlap of the two wave functions, and we're going to say that phi i phi j is just s i j, which is the overlap integral and says how well the wave functions phi i and phi j overlap. Now we'll need to minimize this term by taking the derivative. In order to do that, I'll multiply both sides um, by the bottom term. So we have E times C1 squared plus C2 squared plus 2C1 C2 um, S12 is equal to C1 squared H11 plus 2C1 C2 H12 plus C2 squared H22. Now I take the derivative with respect to C1 on both sides holding C2 constant and we get using the product rule on this side we get um, DE by DC1 constant C2 times C1 squared plus C2 squared plus 2C1 C2 S12 plus holding now this constant and taking the derivative of this E times 2C1 plus this term vanishes 2C2 S12 on, on the left hand side and on the right hand side we get 2C1 H11 plus 2C2 H12. And again, this term vanishes. Now, since we said that in order to minimize the energy, we'll set this derivative to zero, we can immediately say that this term is zero, and so we're only left with this term on the left-hand side and this on the right-hand side. We also note how there's a factor of two in every term, which we can just cancel. And then now, 
Let's collect terms for C1 and C2. So I'll write C1 and then H11, and from this side we get E, so H11 minus E plus C2, H12 minus ES12. And then this entire thing is equal to zero since I collected the terms from this side on this side. Now I've done this derivative with respect to C1, but I also need to do it with respect to C2. This is simple, however, since if we look back up here, everything is symmetric with respect to C1 and C2. So when we write down the expression for C2, we just note that now C1 has the mixed 1, 2 terms, so H12 minus E S12, while C2 gets the, the pure terms with H22 minus E, which is also equal to 0. Now if you look at this equation, you might realize that it's a matrix equation, where these are the entries of the matrix, and this is the vector we're multiplying by. So let me rewrite this as H11 minus E, H12 minus E, S12, H12 minus E, S12, and H22 minus E as our matrix. And then we times it by a vector of coefficients. And all of this is equal to the zero vector so 0, 0, which we could realize is nothing but an eigenvalue problem. And in order to get the eigenvalues for the energy, um, what we'll have to do is we have to find non-trivial solutions for this equation. And we'll only find non-trivial solutions, which means that C1 and C2 are not just 0, if the determinant the determinant is zero. So that's what we have to solve in order to solve the problem. We'll have to set the determinant equal to zero, which in this case would give us um, a second order equation, um, which we'll have to set equal to zero. Um, in Hooker theory, we simplify the problem even more. We say that h i i is equal to alpha, which means alpha is just an indicator of the orbital energy, which usually is the p orbital on carbon. And we say that h i j is beta, which describes the interaction of two p orbitals. And here we say that only um, orbitals that are adjacent to one another interact. So only orbitals that are adjacent to one another will get a term beta. We also say that S1 or Sij is equal to zero. So we say that there's no overlap, which seems illogical, but it simplifies the maths. And since we're just aiming for a qualitative picture of the energy levels, um, this is not such a big problem. Um, so in the next videos, I'm going to show you how to actually solve some problems using the theory we just derived. Um, and I'm going to do this in two approaches. I'm going to show you how it's classically done by solving the determinant with maths. And I'm going to show you how you can solve these Hückel determinants using symmetry, which in my opinion makes it a lot easier once you get your head around it.